KL divergence is a sort of metric that tells us how two distributions are close or far from one another. It is usually denoted by KL P Q or sometimes also as D for divergence KL P Q. And its formula for the continuous case is an integral over the domain of x of p of x log p of x divided by q of x dx. And for the discrete case, it's the sum over the domain of x of the same thing. Now, the KL divergence is not exactly a distance. Uh, you can think of it intuitively like a distance, but it is not. It is always greater or equal to zero, where it is equal to zero only when the two distributions are the same. So in that sense, it is kind of like a distance, but it is not symmetric. So um, the KL of P Q is not equal to the KL of QP. Now I want to give you some examples, so I'll switch into R. And here I made a function that uh, basically computes the continuous KL divergence. Continuous. Yeah. Okay, it takes two uh, probability densities and it computes the formula that I just showed it to you. Uh, so here it is. And now let's put it into action. And here are uh, a graph of two normal distribution and they are actually really sim uh, symmetric into one another. Um, so if I calculate the KL divergence between the two, it actually comes out to be exactly the same, it comes out to be two. Okay, so let's take another example. Here I take a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom and here I take an exponential distribution uh, with a rate of one. And here the KL divergence is a bit different. Uh, as you can see, the KL of P and Q is not exactly the same as the KL of Q and P. Let's take another example. Let's test the distance, the KL divergence between a normal distribution and a T distribution. And I'm talking about um, the standard normal and a T distribution with one degree of freedom. Um, so we can see that the KL divergence uh, from P to Q is 0.26 more or less. But if I'll try to um, calculate the KL of Q to P, I get an error and it tells me that the integral is probably divergent. That means that the KL in this case is equal to infinity. And why is it so? Well, algebraically, uh, we can see if we plot just the, the tails of these distributions, that the T distribution is much, 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 uh, have much thicker tails than the normal distribution. And we can see here, if we take uh, a value of 10, then you are 10 to the tw almost 20, 10 to the 19, more likely to uh, have a, to be in a T distribution than to be in a normal distribution. And so this is what affects the integral and the calculation and makes it infinity. But you can also kind of think of it as if you are testing an hypothesis. The, the Q in the KL divergent, the one in the second place, is always your null hypothesis. So if your null hypothesis is a T distribution and your alternative hypothesis is a normal distribution, it's a bit hard to prove this because all the values of a normal distribution that you will receive will actually fall in a reasonable range of the T distribution. Uh, but it is not the same if you reverse it. If your null hypothesis is of a normal distribution and your alternative hypothesis is of a t distribution then you will get a lot of results in the tails over here 
that will make it very clear to you that you have to reject your null hypothesis. And this is why the KL divergence in this case, uh, this is another way to kind of understand the intuition behind the KL divergence. But for me, I think it's a bit of a problem because we can see that these two distributions are more or less the same, uh, but from one point of view, their KL divergence is 0.26, and from another point of view, their, K, their distance is infinite. So we have to be a bit careful with this metric in general. Now, a final thing is you can also try to create a discrete version of this. And here I took a discrete version that takes number between 0 and 2 to the 20. And I just chose this number so that it will be big enough for my purpose, but not enough to blow my memory. And we can also compute this, for example, for two Poisson's distribution. And uh, we can see that we get 0 0.3 for uh, one way and 0 0.38 for another way. But actually, there is a closed form formula for uh, comparing two Poisson's distribution. And it's quite easy to compute. Maybe I just show it to you. Suppose that for our p, our pdf is f of x, and for our q, our pdf is g of x. Then if we look at the log of f of x divided by g of x, it's just the log of these two pdfs divided, and the x uh, factorial factors cancel out. And we are left with just x log lambda 1 divided by lambda 2 plus lambda 2 minus lambda 1. And if we take now the KL divergence of this, it's just f of x times this thing over here. Uh, and you can think of it as if it's the expectations with regard to f of x of this term. And the only thing that we need to uh, basically take the expectation of is this x, which and the expectation of x is always equal to the mean in the Poisson distribution. And we are left with this formula over here. And if we want to change uh, the KL divergence to be Q2P, then it will just we'll just switch the lambda 1 and lambda 2 in this formula over here. And you can see indeed this is the formula that I wrote to you over here. One final thing that you might wonder is can you compare a continuous distribution to a discrete distribution? Can you find their KL divergence? Well, technically you can, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, the result will always going to be infinity. And I will leave a link in the description for some source material. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.